Do you work or are you a student? Now, please tell me your entire life story. If you were to do this in your IELTS speaking test, it may not work out well for you. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to answer these questions, these common questions in part one, as you should do to get a great score. Hi, my name's Phil, and you're watching the IELTS Grind. If you're not a subscriber yet, why not become one? Because we have plenty of videos coming out twice a week, sometimes more, full of tips about preparation for the IELTS test. Okay, so today we're talking about part one from the speaking test in IELTS. Now this question about work or study, it's quite a common one. And you're often going to have this one as the first set of questions in part one. If you don't have something about work and study, it's going to be about home. Now the thing is, because it's so familiar and you've probably seen these questions in your preparation so many times, you're going to be tempted to load them, your answers, load your answers with so much information that you're probably going to run out of time. This would not be the best thing to do. In fact, you want to spread uh, your, your time amongst all three sets of questions that you get in part one. So um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you uh, some examples from this topic, work or being a student, and I'm going to give you some you know, tips on what your answer should be by actually answering the questions myself. Now, I've taken this list from past exam papers and from textbooks, so things that you can find yourself. Now, here's a really good tip. In fact, if you look at the questions in those past papers or in those textbooks, you'll notice some patterns, not only for the work and study, not only for the home, but for any type of topic. So if you learn the style of questions that they're likely to ask you in the IELTS, you're going to find it much easier when you get in the exam room not to panic, not to fumble over your answers. You're going to be much more prepared than someone who hasn't realised that this is true. So have a listen to the questions and think about hmm, what questions are we actually answering. OK, shall we get into it? Let's go. What do you do? Do you work or are you a student? Oh, um, actually, uh, I'm a teacher. Where do you work? I, I work in a school um, which is located in Taipei. It's quite near to uh, the local MRT station. And it's quite a, a big building uh, with lots of offices in it. What are some of your responsibilities? Well, I would say my main responsibility is to organize classes, uh, to think about the syllabus that I'm teaching my students. And also, um, I have a lot of uh, contact time with the students in the classroom. Uh, in addition to that, I also have to mark a lot of essays. And occasionally, there's uh, some meetings with the other faculty. Who was the first person you met at work? Um, well, it was actually my boss. Um, I went for an interview and uh, I was a little bit nervous, but she's quite friendly. Um, she made me feel at ease and we had a nice conversation about my past experience. And uh, since then, uh, we've become quite good friends and uh, it's quite nice working with her. Do you prefer to work alone or as part of a team? Well, here's the thing. Um, as a teacher, I'm kind of forced to work alone. Uh, so you have to be quite independent. And I quite like that. Um, it's difficult going from that to working in a group. Although in past jobs, I have had to do that. I think I prefer being independent. When do you usually get off work? Well, this is the thing. Um, it, it really depends on the class schedule. Um, it could be quite late in the evening, uh, usually around 10 o'clock. Although uh, on the weekend, I start a lot of earlier. So I would also finish earlier, sort of in the early afternoon. Um, so yeah, it really depends on the schedule. Do you think you will continue to do this type of work in the future? 
Oh, definitely, yeah. I've been doing this for the best part of a decade. Uh, I don't think I'm going to stop unless someone uh, sacks me and I can't get another job. Uh, but yeah, I quite enjoy teaching. I think it's a really rewarding experience. How long do you usually work each day? Um, well, in the classroom, I, I normally spend about three hours with students, three to four hours. But there's also a lot of preparation time um, and marking time. So in total, it's, it's almost a full day at work, as if I was an office worker. So about eight hours a day. What do you do? Do you work or are you a student? I'm currently a student. I'm, uh, I'm studying at university. What subjects did you choose? Well, I chose history. It's, it's always been a passion of mine. Although, I mean, when you talk to other people, they say perhaps it's not the best thing to study as a vocation, but I've always been very interested in ancient people and uh, stories from the past. So it seemed a right, the right fit for me, really. Well, actually, um, as a secondary school student, um, my choices are limited. Um, what generally happens is you choose between uh, an academic route or uh, sort of an engineer route and you're given certain subjects. So I, I didn't have much choice apart from if I wanted to do humanities or if I wanted to do literature or uh, dance and things like that. So a lot of the, uh, the subjects were chosen by the school already. I didn't actually have any choice in the matter. Uh, at my school, um, every single secondary school student has to do exactly the same. Um, so whether it's you know history, science, and uh, the only real difference is which what time of day that I get to study those particular subjects. Um, I'm I'm not too disappointed about that, but you know, it, some things I may not have chosen myself. Where do you study? I study at a university, it's called the University of Kent. It's actually in a place in the uh, southeast of England, it's called Canterbury. Very nice town. Will you continue to study this subject? Definitely. This, this is a lifelong passion for me. Uh, once you're a, a bit of a history geek, I don't think you can, you can let go. As I said before, it may not pay the bills, but it's something I'm definitely interested in and I, I don't think I'll ever let it out of my life. Who was the first person you met on your course? Well, yeah, I have quite fond memories of this actually. Um, so one of my oldest friends, uh, a guy called Greg, who I actually met in my very first class on my very first day, and I was a little bit nervous. Um, I had a not a very nice teacher and he sort of took me under his wing and we we're friends all through uh, secondary school and also into university we went to the same place and uh, that was really nice to have a friend through that experience. I remember this distinctly um, the first person I met was one of my very good friends uh, Greg I actually met him on my very first day in my very first class uh, Greg is quite a personality. He's, he's very outgoing and uh, he's, he's very enthusiastic about a lot of things and uh, above all he's very friendly. He took me under his wing, showed me the ropes and everything. Um, to look at him you probably wouldn't think he's very attractive. He's got a bit of a square head I suppose, um, a bit of a, a squat nose and growing up uh, he wasn't really in shape. He, uh, he wasn't a sportsman at all. But apart from all those things, I mean, he was a great guy. I remember this very distinctly. Um, the first person I met was uh, a good friend, used to be a good friend of mine, uh, called Greg. Um, Greg was very easygoing, very outgoing as well. Um, and he was very enthusiastic about life. I remember that. And above all, he was very, very friendly. And he, he took me under his wing and he showed me the ropes. Uh, to describe him, I would say he wasn't the most attractive guy. He had a bit of a square head and uh, what I can only describe as a squat nose. Uh, yeah, he, he was also a little bit overweight. He, he definitely wasn't in shape. 
Um, but apart from all these things, he was a very good friend of mine. Do you prefer to study alone or in a group? Well, this is the tricky thing. Um, if I'm honest, probably on my own. Uh, I get a little bit distracted when there's other people. Either you know you have a a good idea that you want to share, or you're you're joking around. I, I feel I'm much more productive working alone. When do you usually get out of class? Well, um, when I was at university, I didn't have many contact hours, in fact. So my classes were normally in the mid-morning. So I, I would always get out of class around midday, you know, about time for lunch, and then the rest of the day I'd, I'd spend studying in my room. How long do you usually study each day? Well, um, as a student uh, with not many contact hours, I have a lot of reading. So um, I would say I, I spend anywhere between five and eight hours a day. Of course, if there's a, an essay due, I might pull an all-nighter and uh, work through the night into the wee hours. Um, but the problem with that is if you burn the candle at both ends, your work suffers. OK, so hopefully you saw or you heard a few good examples of how to answer questions like this in the exam. Now, one of the key things I want to point out is the fact that I didn't waffle on. My answers were concise. I didn't give a, too much information. I gave as much information as I needed to give a good answer, to extend it and add information where relevant. I didn't start talking about things that were not connected to the question. And in those examples, I also showed you um, different styles of answers based on your situation, whether you are in secondary school, high school, whether you're a university student, or whether or not uh, you're still friends with someone that you're describing. So if you go back through the video and you practice the way that I was giving my answer, there's a few really good idioms that I used. And of course, there's some really good uh, cohesive devices, some good CC words that you should definitely steal. OK, guys, so make sure that when you come to this in your exam, when you're talking about work or study or home, don't spend the entire part of part one on this. Make sure that you keep your answers nice and short where necessary so you can get on to the other two sets of questions and you can really shine and show your best and you'll get a great score. OK, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber to this channel, hey, why not become one right now? And you're not going to miss any more of these videos that we put up twice a week just for you to help you prepare for your IELTS. And I will see you in one of those videos very soon. Bye-bye.